All right, everybody, super pumped to be here. Hello and welcome to episode number 312 of Honest to God. You are listening to AM 1160 The Quest, and we got a great lineup here. We got Noah, who's new. Mm -hmm. We got Cameron, long time Cameron. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks we, for having me. Yeah, man. Happy to have you. We got Madeline, and we got country music superstar Kane Brown <laughs> right over there. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. Sorry, soon. <laughs> yeah, we got him. We got him in studio today, all the way from, I mean, I don't know, are you touring right now? It's kind of touring season. You know, I. Sometimes, you know, you forget yourself, you know. So. Yeah. Well, it's really cool. Uh, we're going to make sure that we... My life's crazy. My life's a beauty, so... Well, that's <laughs> a great throw, segue, throw that out <laughs> actually, to today's episode, because we're going to be talking about life and how to handle <clears throat> bad crap when happening. When it gets crazy. Yeah. Like, True. when you're concert doesn't sell. I don't know what kind of problems a country music superstar has, but we'll find out today from Not Kane Brown. Beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll have to say that. So, yeah, you can say the word beer on here. All right, but before we do any of that, we're going to start with a prayer. Uh, Cameron said he wanted to pray, so sure knock it out. All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Oh God, you are worthy of all our love, all our trust, all our desires. You brought us here for the sole purpose that we may grow in knowledge of you and, and a deeper love for you. Mary, our most loving mother, we humbly ask that you may intercede for us so that we may speak the words that the Holy Spirit desires. So we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. That was top tier. That was a top, that was good. That was top good. 10%. On the drive here. <laughs> Whipped up something a little quick. You <laughs> rocked it. That was really, really good. Uh, so just one fact of peace from... Kane and uh, Matt Line. <laughs> Can I keep calling you Kane Brown for the love of this? All right. If you're listening, Pat looks a lot like Kane Brown. Like, it's weird. It's uncanny like how much he looks like Kane Brown. Uh, and Cameron, you got to give us uh, two because two. it's been too long since you've been on. Uh, I, so I had, I had trouble long. coming up with one. You, so. you earned one mm. back. It doesn't mm. have to be a fun fact about you. It just has to be a fun fact. Just a fun fact in general. And then oh, Noah, okay. fun fact you got to give us five. Cause five. It's your first time. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Where you been, man? You got five. You want me to start down there? So you got time to find Oh, five? yeah, yeah. I'm just All right. Gonna... Kane, we'll start with you. I have one. You just one. I started relearning Spanish because you, really? you should have hobbies. Los gatos están en la biblioteca. Está muy grande y sucio. The cats Limpias are... tus gatos, por favor. Mm. <laughs> what I say? Cats are in the library. Cats are in the And room? that's really all you need after that. <laughs> 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 your cats are in the library. They're big and dirty. Clean your cats, please. It's <laughs> insightful. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a lot of gibberish in foreign languages. All right. Uh, Madeline, what you okay. got? Okay. Um, uh, okay, if I started young, I would have been a famous child actor. Okay, <laughs> that's not a fun fact. That's yes, just a I'm, random I'm, sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, but I'm not. I listen, I've been on here so much, y'all already know who I am. But give us a fun fact about something else. Fun fact about something platypuses else. are poisonous. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's what's your fun fact. You Aren't can, they like mammals are, too? Like, they are they're mammals, they're yeah. Only, like, mammals. But they lay eggs, yeah. Oh, mm. so just that's what it was. That, but then you, just took it from me. you got anything else? Um, no, I. Just, you had a week to prepare. You didn't think of anything. <laughs> I, We've I, been I, keeping you in the top drawer of that file cabinet for, since our last episode. Yeah, a week you, ago. Okay, yeah, but you kept me in there with no, no resources, nothing. <laughs> I couldn't look anything up. Uh, that's fair. Okay, I was just in my own thoughts. All right, I think that Madeline, her fun fact might be that aside from me, producer Ben over there tickling the keys, mm -hmm. and what may or may not be to my right. I think Madeline has been on here more than anybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that could be your fun so, fact. Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right, cool. Cameron, you owe us two, man. Uh, uh, the first one is um, last year today, me, Madeline, and a couple others were in Colorado on a road trip. Mm. Heck yeah. yeah. Wait, dang it, that's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of frosted mini wheats. Memes. Yeah, well, you know, I just, it's all we had, and we were mm -hmm. dealing with what we had, yeah. yeah. So it was kind of scraping yeah. the bottom of the barrel. But, all right, cool. But yeah. So, so that's one. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. The other one is um, if you are 23 years old, you have lived through 10% of all U.S. history. Oh, so, yeah. Whoa. I'm 34 in two days. How yeah. many, how much of, have I lived? Uh, over 10. Uh, yeah, over 10. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Never More thought about 10. that. So if you're like, what is it? I think 46, you've lived through 20%. Wow. That's crazy. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that See, cool. Madeline, that was a great fun Come on, fact. Madeline. Off the wow. cusp. I, okay, listen, I'm not, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't just pull facts out of my brain. 
What Noah, for? you got you got five, brother. Ooh, it's gonna be yeah, rough. Good luck. It's gonna be rough. <laughs> we gave you some warm up time. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe mine. You know, can be like two parters, three parters. That's fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so I am a three sport athlete. Uh, surprise viewers, I use a wheelchair. So my sports are adaptive sports. Uh, we'll get to the the use of the wheelchair later in the in the podcast. But I play. Uh, I do wheelchair mountain biking. Uh, adaptive adaptive mountain biking. Adaptive. Uh, water skiing and a uh, sport y'all probably have never heard of uh, wheelchair rugby. Every all one of those sports, if you asked awesome. me to like, make a list of the sports <laughs> that I thought you could do in a wheelchair, those would probably all be at the bottom of that list. Yeah. Exactly. Oh uh, God, that's so wheelchair rugby is also known as murder ball. Okay, oh, great. So like, that's, it's, wow. it's like the one and only like contact adaptive <laughs> sport. Off, like, that's so cool. It's, uh, it's basically just bumper cars and wheelchairs <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a ball to the, under the uh, other end of the court it's uh it's fun that's awesome uh, there is a 100 percent chance that i will be youtubing wheelchair rugby oh, when I get home. It, it's yeah here i guess this will, this will be another fun fact it is the uh most popular like to watch uh like paralympic sport yeah, Whoa. That's, so, that's awesome. Cool. All right, that was good. I'll give you four for that whole. All right, I'll, I'll give you one more. One just popped in my mind, and it, it's it's a doozy. So, uh, yesterday was July fourth, and we had the Peachtree uh, Road Race yeah. in Atlanta. I don't know if y'all uh, saw this or not, but uh, in the women's division, uh, the last like it had to be like less than a football field's length. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl in front was following a. Uh, uh, the police patrol he's on like a a motorcycle and he turns off so he's not like uh, no yeah so he turns off on the street so he, you know he's not in front of her like as she crosses the finish line she follows him Whoa. on the street oh, no. just no. for the smallest amount of time for two other people to pass oh oh and my she comes goodness. in third that's mm -hmm. awful like, oh it's heartbreaking yeah that's awful yeah. my wife did the peace tree road race years ago yeah, she got she was super into running for a little while, and then she is currently very pregnant. So yeah, I was about to say that's very impressive. <laughs> she, yeah. Yeah. So she laid off the running. What's that? She laid off on the running a little bit. Okay. It's tough <laughs> when you're training when you're doing those marathons and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's well, like oh, a family <laughs> decision. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. I would shoot, get uh, get home from work and she'd be like, "All right, well, I got to run 18 miles." Like, okay, I'll see you Ooh, tomorrow go, morning. Go yeah. to um, if you had one song on repeat for a whole marathon, what would it be? Oh, you know what? Sure, let's do that. I like that. Um, <laughs> Madeline. I don't I don't know I I, I, song. Uh, yeah. well I need something that was like you know All I right. could like run to the pace would of, you want like wait, chill come, music or like back pump up music no 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 wait come back to me mine is uh the last stand by Sabaton it's a speed metal band and they write all their songs based on like historical events. Ooh. And mm -hmm. the last stand is about this time where uh the Swiss Guard had to uh, the Holy Roman Empire invades uh, the Papal States and the Swiss Guard has to sneak the Pope away. So like 40 of them go with the Pope and sneak him to this like stronghold somewhere else. And the other 189 stand on the steps uh, of the Papal Palace at the time and fight an army of like 10,000 Holy Roman Emperors, uh, the Holy Roman Emperor soldiers. And every single one of the Swiss Guards die, but they delay them long enough to get the Pope out. And it's such wow. a great, it's like, huh. it's like, it's metal, That's but it's cool. not like super heavy. It's yeah. speed metal. That's it's awesome. Good. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. <laughs> Great. Okay, who, who can follow that? <laughs> yeah, really good. Kane, you got something? Um, I'm trying to think. It'd either be there was this one. I don't remember. It's some some song from the Rocky plays. I forgot what it was. Oh, I, I know that's I know it's like cliche, but like no, that's a totally valid answer. <clears throat> um, and then I there's the there's the final count. Have you ever watched uh, Three Hundred? Yeah. Um, obviously. like it's the incredible. the song when he, it's called Return of the King when he comes back from like killing the wolf. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A cool one. That good is one. cool. That, in the, the, you're talking about the beginning your, with on the your light. PRs in the gym. Good song. Good song. Awesome. Or song. Sorry, right, Madeline. I had a lot of time to prepare. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. I guess. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> 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 maybe I don't know. I probably something that like um maybe like like in the first Narnia, like the song going into battle. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe yeah, that's, that's a really good one. <laughs> I feel like I'd be on fire the whole We race. normally don't do these at the beginning, but I liked it. I mean, we're rolling with it. Cameron, you got one? Oh, I got to pick one? Mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> got a funny one, but I'm not going to say that one. Um, if, no, you can cut in line if it's taking him time and you got one. I'll say go. zombie. 
Zombie, okay. Uh, All right. That's good. Um, Cranberries. I think, yeah. think mine would be like in, at the beginning of every like military movie, A Fortunate Son. Yeah. Ooh. 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 We're going to get sued now. <laughs> Freedom's Clearwater Revival. <laughs> Copyright. Yeah. yeah. It's a big show. I know that they're all fans. Um, I think they're a sponsor, actually. Right? Uh, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because they're on tour. So we, 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 we could clear it up. <laughs> Their sponsor is not CCR, uh, but today's sponsor is the yeah like 45 seconds at the beginning of every movie about the vietnam war that plays ccr <laughs> exactly. that section of those movies is actually sponsoring today's episode so big shout out thank you guys <laughs> those first 45 seconds um all right so we got a we got a, a big topic today we're talking about it beforehand a little bit and it's when bad things happen to good people right what does that mean what is that I, there's a whole lot of places to go with it but it was your idea cameron right well, my idea was the trusting God in difficult situations one. Okay. So, well, what came across my yeah, desk. Yeah. <laughs> we have a vast bureaucracy here, yeah. honest to God. We got merged into the same. Okay, same cool. Thing, yeah. So wait, I'm sorry, repeat it. What was that? Uh, trusting God in difficult situations. So at that, I, I'm going to give you my honest opinion yeah. on it. On the surface, sounds like the most cliched, boring oh, totally. kind of totally. talk ever. Yeah. But I feel like... I don't know. I feel like you can really dig your teeth into it a yeah, lot. And absolutely. Let's let's roll with it. So, yeah. what in particular? Like, what do you want to? Like, why why is that something you can come in here and talk about anything? That a show about yeah, yeah. Uh, genetic genetically engineering dinosaurs not too long ago. We talk about lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Why that? Why are we digging into that? Yeah. Way? Well, it kind of started with um, kind of like in college. I'd say like last year at the at the very latest, kind of like six months ago. I remember driving back and forth to college and just stuff wasn't going the way I wanted it to, and a lot of unpredictable things going on. And, um, and I started thinking, I was like, how am I going to solve all these different problems? And how am I going to, you know, bring all this to the turn out the way I want it to? And um, I started thinking, I was like, well, I'm t- easy. I'm just going to give it to God, you know, and, and I'll yeah. be that. It's so easy. And I would say it and I would go right back to like, you know, mm-hmm. up at 3 a.m., can't sleep, just mm-hmm. totally thinking about it. And I got to thinking, I was like, why, if I know God is real, and I know his plan is absolutely perfect. Can it be so hard to trust him? Right. You know? And um, and so I kind of kind of took like the, the next few months just trying to like find an answer to that. And um, I think eventually found it, but it was it's it's like you said, it's one of those where it kind of seems cliche, but it's also you can really dive deep into sure. it. And like I know everyone's a little bit per- you know different on it. Um, but yeah. yeah cool. It's a big topic. All right, I dig it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's let's dig in a little bit, and I'm trying to figure out how we can break that up a little more into into bite-sized chunks because it's one of those mm-hmm. things where everybody sitting in this room has had that experience, right? And we all have probably attempted a lot of sort of the, I don't know, I don't want to say like pop Christian advice, but mm-hmm. you can listen to a ton of people who oh, will yeah. say, and I can give you a whole lot of trite cliches on it right now, but I mean, there have been, I bet everybody here, whether they want to share them or not, really, really dark moments in, in all of our lives. And that spiritual dryness and all of that is a it's a it's a real thing. So what were you gonna say, Patrick? Yeah, I just think like, you know, everyone, like you said, has had that moment where it's like, okay, like why? Like I can't like my no one's brain can ever like fathom, you know, like why 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 is God so good? And like I hear all about why God is good and it's mm-hmm. such a common thing. And it's like, I don't feel that. Like if I'm being honest, like, oh, I try to like you know put on a smile and be like hey, everything's good you know like yeah. it, um but it's so hard like you i feel like everyone just kind of has to grapple with that and like at some point you're just like i'm sick of this like i need an answer yeah you know and like the, the bible does you know give some insight into that um namely of course you know the book of job and but it doesn't really exclusively you can't look up like why is suffering happening in my life mm-hmm. you know it's just it's just not a, a thing and, and people everyone grapples with that you know everyone need like i just feel like my personality too like i just i need answers to things and, and you can't well that feeling versus knowing which i'm really glad you yeah. brought up i mean that's something i was i had spiritual direction this morning big shout out to father bruce uh and i was saying that same thing i was saying like i have no doubts about any of this man mm-hmm. i'm i'm all in i'm bought in mm-hmm. i'm like a shiite catholic man mm-hmm. i'm in there i'm all about it but a lot of times it doesn't help. A lot of times I'm still sitting yeah. there in adoration. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been sitting in adoration for 30 minutes and I just feel like I'm bored out of my mind sitting in adoration. I know that's you, God. Here I am. There you are. Like, give me give me something. And it, it can be super frustrating. I think it's ridiculous for us to pretend like Christianity or Catholicism in particular is rainbows and unicorn farts, right? And that it's all this emotional 
whatever. If you're looking for the emotional stuff, and sometimes if you're lucky, the emotional stuff will come. But uh, we're we're not here for feelings, right? Yeah. So I don't know. What else? Yeah, I mean, I think if you no, if you no, wanted go ahead, to go, go um, I just always call on Madeline every time there's a, <laughs> a little bit of a lull. Well, I did want to I did want to share because you know I was list, I was redoing the the Bible in the year um, okay. with with Father Mike, mm -hmm. um, and you know. You go through the the first couple and it's like the book of Job and I'm like, I'm getting to it, man. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting the answer. I'm like, all these Google searches, everything, and this is all it. And then, and then he keeps egging it on too. He's like, but God's going to show up soon and he's going to make this right. And I was like, he always does. Man. <laughs> I was like, yeah. my man, you know, you never, and, and you do get to, I think it's, uh, just have it pulled up right here. Uh, Job 38 and mm -hmm. this is where God shows up and what does he say like and what he says is extremely important um you know he basically says to Job like I mean this is kind of like in a nutshell like like have you seen the mountain goat on like <laughs> that's like hundreds away from or hundreds of miles away from other people and like he is prancing along this mountain and like he goes through all these different like animals and stuff like that and it's like he basically just says like were you there when i created the universe right. were you there when he like puts like everything like into perspective not to like like belittle him you right. know what i'm saying but like just to say like i'm so much greater than you like i see every tree fall that's like yeah. in the forest you know and like you know it's it's just crazy how like insightful he is and then you you're just kind of like does it even matter anymore does right. that does that does the answer I'm looking for, does it even matter anymore? Because you just put it into like this. I love how he does that. Like he just, you, he takes um, a question you have and he flips it around and it's like, it, does it even matter? You know, like does, yeah, that's does anything, cool. does anything else like Job matter, but the, you know, the love of God and the knowledge and the, and just the greatness of him, you know? It's totally. Just, yeah. yeah. Just to piggyback up on that. Um, I think it's, it's important too. Cause sometimes like you're saying, sometimes, I feel like a lot of the time when we don't trust him, it's because we're kind of like trying to deal with it ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and we think for whatever reason, I mean, there's a million different, different reasons for that. But I think um, it's important for us to, like you're saying, like understand kind of like how small we are in the grand scheme of things. And sometimes God allows you to go into these sort of dark times to be like, look, you're not in control. I'm the mm -hmm. one who's in control. I have control over the waves and the sea and everything going on. Um, and it's not you. So like have peace with that. Um, I love the, uh, but I don't, that's the thing, yeah, know, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the problem for sure. Well, and that's, that's the thing where it's like, well, you have to sort of define the terms and it's like, what does trusting God actually mean? And it's like you were saying earlier, it's nothing emotional whatsoever. Like our, our emotional attachments to our things are completely separate from actually trusting him because trusting him doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to be happy, go lucky, all is right with the world. You know, the world's on fire, but everything's okay. Cause I completely trust him. It's not that whatsoever. Um, so it's, in my opinion, trusting God is, it's, it's impossible to absolutely trust him when you're still like grabbing for control yeah. over it. Yeah. So like the only way to actually trust him is when you, you say, okay, I, I still want this thing. And he knows you care, you care about it. And he knows that the only reason that you really stress about it is because he cares about it. And he, he loves that you're passionate about it and he loves that you care about it. And he, but he doesn't want you to be up till 3am, you know, stressed right. about these sorts of things. And, um, and so he's like. I'm going to take you to this place just to show you that you're not in control. Have peace with that. But even though you're emotionally, you can still be totally stressed out about it. I just want control. Right. I just need your word that I have control. Actually, I want to like bounce off of what both of y'all said. Um, so uh, especially when I was in high school, I went through a lot of like personal issues, a lot of family stuff and like that. And I would like talk to my friends about it. And I remember them being like, well, how are you like? okay now and my mindset at the time was like if i'm still able to laugh then i'm okay. like i'm still able to get through it. like i know the reason i'm getting through this is because god is with me like i know most of the time i don't see him there i don't feel him there but i know the reason i'm still standing here today is because of him right and so it's kind of like been my mindset but i liked what you're saying about having control especially i am a very independent person i love doing everything on my own i hate having other I like to be in charge I like to have control so a lot of times in my life and especially with my relationship with God I definitely 
I don't let him take control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so recently there was actually, I did VBS with my church and awesome. our theme was growing in fruits of the spirit. And it was actually fun as like a farm theme and mm -hmm. I got dressed up as a farmer. But um, <laughs> anyways, one of the, I was on the skit team, hence why I would be a child. I would have been a fantastic actor. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right, speculation doesn't count as fun facts. <laughs> um, but I, one, of, one day, one of the skits was about, uh, one of the guys was like, one of the characters was like really stressing out and they were like, well, just take a second and find the joy in, in your day. Like it's, you're practically tripping over it every single day. You just don't like see mm -hmm. it. And so I like two days later after we did that skit, I was in such a mental funk. I like, I felt like everything was going wrong and I was upstairs in my room and I didn't even want to go downstairs to work out where like workout equipment was. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I'm just going to try to do it in my room. I did like three exercises and I was like, I'm, I'm not feeling, I, I feel like, crap i'm not anything and then i was like you know what I, I was like it's about time that i do this so i sat down in my chair and i was like all right god i was like it's yours i'm giving it up like i i, I it's, it's past overdue but i'm just gonna do it the next day was probably one of the best days of my life i like felt so much joy i was like standing outside uh i laughed so much that day i was standing outside i was enjoying the wind it was a little bit of an overcast day but it was like that nice like yeah, strong yeah. breeze um but but yeah like i i was like i finally just let go and let him take control and i, I dig know. it <laughs> yeah. i i do have to say though where is like the boundary i guess there's really is no like boundary but like we are like made up of like a bunch of and not to get like biological for a second we are made up of like a bunch of hormones and different chemicals and stuff yeah. like that where is kind of like the the line where it's like okay like because of all this is happening like in your brain like in your body like it's almost like it's really like you have this like objective like you know buildup of hormones and stuff like that that like can cause you uh, depression or anxiety yeah. or something like that where is the line come where it's like okay i'm trusting in god yet i have all these different things that are happening to me yeah. you know what i'm saying i mean and my take on that and anybody feel free to jump in but is that your culpability levels right, right can be lessened based on all those biological <laughs> factors but at the end of the day what separates us from the beasts is the fact that we have intellectual souls and we can reason and mm -hmm. philosophize and understand and that separation i think we talked about this a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. or that understanding that you're not your feelings yeah. and that's not just counting mental, mental illness right or just right. severe depression or anything like that but it's saying that even when you you can recognize i'm struggling with these things and realize that i am not these things and these things don't define me mm -hmm. that doesn't help you in the moment feel better right Right. But we have a we have an intellect, right? I mean, that's my take. What are you gonna say? Yeah, well, I was I was gonna say that. Um, and this may be to your point, or maybe not, but um, it's like one of the reasons that we sort of have this, we have a desire to trust something because it's so much easier for to just for us to just trust somebody else to do certain things and just mm -hmm. not have to worry about it. But but we are like, like you said, God created us with free will, and He didn't for the same reason He didn't create us forcing us to love him because he wanted us to make that decision on our own right. for our own reasons. Right. And because he wants it to be genuine. And the same thing is true with trusting him is he doesn't say, Oh, you should just trust me just because you should. And I'm worthy of it, which he totally could because he right. totally is worthy <laughs> yeah. of it. Um, and it, I think it just Plus goes to God's show, voice doesn't sound like that. <laughs> I hope not. It sounds exactly yeah. like Jim Caviezel. Yeah. I, you're yeah. probably right. It sounds yeah. like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> that's or it sounds, it that's sound God's like, the father. You're right. I think it sounds like Matt Fred's. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Maybe he's a little Australian. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, no, but anyways. No, no, sorry. <laughs> but maybe the Holy Spirit sounds like that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. One Australian, one British, one yeah. American. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, but anyways, I I think it also just goes to show God's humility because obviously he is the most trustworthy being to ever exist. Yeah. But he doesn't, he didn't create us with this natural just, you're going to trust me, period. Like he wants us to to trust him for our own reasons mm -hmm. um, because it's that's genuine that like he desires a genuine level of trust even if it takes a little bit of kind of like us being scared to do that and it does take a little bit of a leap of faith with anything it takes a leap of faith to love him it takes a leap of faith to trust him um i was gonna say really quick i love the story with um uh peter walking on water mm -hmm. where yeah. you know, jesus they're all scared of him and then and he's like lord if it's really you call me out dude he's like all right come on out and so he gets out there and Jesus, you just have to think that Jesus was like, just focus on me. Don't look at the wind mm -hmm. or don't listen to the wind. Don't look at the waves. Just focus on me. And Peter focuses on Jesus for like a second and he starts going, hang on a second. Yeah. This is pretty scary. But he, and, he, and he's like, this is really risky. And I don't, I'm not comfortable with this amount of risk. And Jesus the whole time is like, just focus on me. I don't want you to think about all the other scary stuff because 
because he will ask you to do those dangerous things in the future and he he needs to know that you're trustworthy um or we need to know that he's trustworthy you know for, for us I, to take those leaps of faith i like how you're making i, I like the 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 metaphor the comparison of you normally we use that sort of the the free will deal with the problem of evil but you're applying it to trust like oh, yeah that's sure. neat i like it a lot yeah. well I, I feel like um trust comes down to these, these little moments in time and like just little moments like where you're just humbled you just have that moment of you know humility and just trust like rushes back into your life at least i I have God. I have I have this in my life. I have that and that's right. that in my life. Mm. And you just have so much trust just from that. And but can lose trust in the same way when something just bad in your life goes. It's well, just all yeah, it trust takes. is almost like a muscle, right? Yeah. You have to work out yeah. a little bit. And I struggle. I mean, I'll be the first person to say that I struggle big time mm -hmm. with trust in general, mm -hmm. but also with my creator. Once again, it's that I don't struggle with like an intellectual assent to it, but I struggle with an emotional like, oh, I feel like I can pour myself into you, Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and that's tough. We, we're about to have a break, but any closing thoughts? I, I just think it's funny that like uh, there's so many stories of like the boat and like the turbulent sea. Mm -hmm. and, and I just imagine the apostles like, gosh, <laughs> Jesus is like, we're going over the, <laughs> going over the lake again, boys. And they're like, Come every on, man. time, yeah. Jesus, yeah. you fall asleep in yeah. the storm. We're going to freak and out. Then, and then all of a sudden they don't see him and they're like, oh. Oh, okay, all right. Court, there he is again. And imagine how many times like it wasn't documented either. Probably happened like 50 <laughs> times. I, think about that. I, yeah. I know that this is... Here we go again. It's apocryphal and I shouldn't be... Uh, I, if, if these were to come up, it wouldn't be good. But I would love us to find some scrolls somewhere <laughs> of just like... I don't know, Jesus broing out with all the apostles. For, and it's just like a chronicle of like, Jesus want to go fishing again, even though we're fishermen, but we went fishing with him. We thought it was a metaphor. No, we've been sitting here fishing all day. <laughs> and just like the joking and laugh. And I always talk about how much I love the chosen, but oh, yeah. it's the best Jesus. Well, it makes him he's so great. It makes him so like real and like relatable. Cause it's like, he still was a person. Right. Well, and 90, 5% of the time that he's hanging out with the apostles, mm -hmm. he's not doing a bunch of yeah. miraculous yeah, stuff. It, it yeah. really he's hanging out yeah. with the apostles. And yeah. just the apostles as well. It really humanizes everybody. Yeah. And it makes them like, oh, yeah, they did exactly what I do today. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Is That's the funny part. Is like, even when Jesus does all those miracles and he does everything, they're still messing stuff up. Yeah. Just yeah. screwing around uh -huh. and messing everything up. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I would love to do. I, I could do a whole episode just on yeah. The Chosen. I think that the... Uh, this whole idea of trusting God is something that is really worth digging into in a big way because it is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really difficult for a lot of people. And I think that there is some real uh, draw towards, and maybe it's, I don't think it's a uniquely American thing. Maybe it's a uniquely modern thing of this, like, no, I got it. No, I can do it all by myself. Right. And that's something that I struggle with. And I don't even know, practically speaking, this is a genuine question. I don't have the right answer here. How do you give up control? I was mm -hmm. just about like, how do you practically like, like go in the gut, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like you can, like there are ways, you know? People I, do I, it. I was just wondering now, like yeah. for, for, for you guys, like what, what would your strategies quote unquote be? For me, you know, um, you know, having an accident happen in my life that, you know, changed my life forever. It really shows you that you have no control over your life and that you know what's going to happen is happened you know our story was written from the beginning so why try try and and change it and so mm -hmm. that that's you well just, i mean i think you, you do have control yeah you know but there's a lot like i just mm -hmm. think there's a lot of things free, free, we're given free will for yeah. a reason you know yeah right but I, I do think like you do have a lot more control than you think over your life but also mm -hmm. at the same time you don't like it's right. weird like it's a little like a yep. combination of it yep. well and it feels so, it feels strange for me to sit here well fed without any serious ailments or right, when there's people suffering the most unimaginable sort of situations. I mean, Noah, you, you said that you, you had this accident that, that caused you physical problems, right? Mm -hmm. I've never experienced something like that. But then you can also say, well, yeah, but think about so-and-so, these people yeah. who live over here where this is happening exactly. or this genocide or this famine or uh, sex trafficking or all the, there's a horrible mm -hmm. bottomless list, it seems, of evil. And it's, I don't know. I feel strange. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I mean, it's good to do, but it feels so strange to sit here and just say like, no, it's really bad. And we have to trust in God. Yeah, for sure. It's unnatural. Right. Mm -hmm. For some extent, because like you're saying, we sort of feel like you, you have to be in control. And like you were saying too, like 
there's a level of control that we have and things that we don't have and with the things that are in our control we feel like it's like our born duty you know to solve every single problem that we have and 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 in some cases it is like you're saying like there's there are times and in, in which there are you know like like school like you choosing to study for a certain test that's not like god like i'm going to trust that you know he's going to put the information <laughs> in my head you know and stuff right. like that have you ever like, seen the meme sorry to interrupt know, where <laughs> he said where the guy's comforting the guy after he's got his head down and the guy's saying don't worry it's all in god's plan and it's just <laughs> god with like a chalkboard it says step one create universe step two fail gabe on his exam <laughs> 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 so, i'm sorry, I'm sorry go ahead. No, no no exactly like you were saying um I guess not exactly. Exactly like I was saying. <laughs> right, right. Back to what I was saying. Complete opposite. John Henry. Um, yeah, no, we, we do have a certain level of control. And I think, I think that can be a, a cause of stress for most people because I think typically, like you're saying, when we think about giving God control, it's usually because we're faced with a decision right. um, and we're faced with like a question. So we say, like, you know, I, I'm going to change my job or, you know, I'm, you know, I have kids and my, you know, or a combination of the two or whatever, you're going to marry someone or something like that. And there are these really big, like really important life decisions that you have to figure out. And you can get to the point where you're sort of, you know, kind of hyper fixating on, I need to fix this problem. I need to solve it. I need to get all my stuff in order, which is true because you do have a, a some responsibility um, to figure those things out. And to my point where it, I think what can relieve a lot of the stress is deciphering between what God has control over and what God wants you to control. Oh, like that's what, interesting. What he wants that's you, very good. Yeah. 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 I what like he wants a lot. Yeah. Like, what's the formula? Oh, that's a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tell us how we do that. <laughs> Step A, fail Ted on the exam. <laughs> yeah. no, um, uh, well, I think one of the great things is that, like, I was, I switched my colleges recently mm -hmm. and, um, and I was kind of deciding, like, for certain reasons, I really wanted to be at the school I'm at and I really did not want to be there as kind of a bit of like a, tug of war kind of thing and and so i had kind of jump ship and that would mean a lot of different for like flying reasons a lot of different requirements it would take me a couple more years to do what i want to do and that kind of stuff um however like the second i decided to kind of jump ship and go that route when i still was kind of unsure of it i was like i'm just kind of birthing the idea and like kind of right. spewing it out and see what people think about it and i got like 100 percent positive feedback on you know that's exactly what you should do i was about to tell you that's what you should do mm -hmm. and stuff like that and so um, Wait, what, feedback from what? Everyone around me, like okay. everyone I asked, like my family, friends, um, and and then I also had a lot of inner peace about it. And it, again, sometimes the decision that you're going to make is not the decision that you're completely at peace with mm -hmm. at first. And like you're saying, sometimes the Holy Spirit, it, he's absolutely um, he doesn't hold back. Like if, if there's a decision you need to make, he doesn't he doesn't hold right. hold anything right. back yeah. his, his truth is absolutely out there yeah. however there are decisions that you can make where it kind of feels 40 49 51 mm -hmm. right where you're yeah. sort of like i really don't know i feel like i'm totally like god's like it's it's up to you like whatever you want to do you can do that um yeah yeah i really like those distinctions too mm -hmm. because I, I feel like we sometimes as you know serious Christians who care about our faith and care about God's will, it does seem like, oh my gosh, let me discern God's will for every single small thing that mm -hmm. I always do. Yeah. And once again, we have free will. God does right. not want us marionettes. Mm -hmm. God's right? like, dude, it's a tuna or tuna sandwich or BLT. <laughs> exactly. Stop. I, I do not care about bacon it's anymore. It's really Subway. It's terrible for you. <laughs> Bad anyway. Um, and yeah, and so there is, I like that. There's, there's, there's things that you can have that piece. And also, so much of it has to do with well-formed consciences mm -hmm. and all of those things going back to us having an intellect right we we can discern for ourselves so much and i think it's almost i don't know if it's a lack of trust in god but uh i, I would say it's it, you can be too hyper focused on doing the best thing right letting the perfect be the enemy of the good mm -hmm. in regards to god and even discernment of decisions when yeah, I, I just wish you would send us emails though. Like that's it my thing. It makes it so just, much easier. Like an app. Yeah. yeah. Just like it's not hard to find us. Yeah, like a magic eight ball kind of thing, but it's definitely God, <laughs> yeah. so we know it's not yeah. evil. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, one thing I've really found in my own kind of life experiences, I've as I've gotten older, is it's been more and more difficult to tell which decision like God wants me to pick. He's like leaving it a little bit more open ended. Yeah. Um, with that, that like both of these things are good and i feel like god wants me to go one way but 
like I really can't tell. Right. Like I like the job that I currently have at a uh, at a local technical college here. Like it was it was very obvious. Like this is what you're going to do. Everything just like worked and worked and worked right. and worked, and that was it. And it, it's gotten less and less so like that. And now I'm um I'm trying to buy a house, mm-hmm. and it it's felt a lot more like okay. I now have to kind of take the initiative in this. You got, you guys, that, not super mm-hmm. concerned with what yeah, house you buy. Exactly. <laughs> I, I know God wants me to buy a house. That mm-hmm. that's that. I feel that draw right. from Him after mm-hmm. praying and thinking about it, and it just seems like the most um, obvious choice at this point. But when it comes down to it, and actually making like. Deciding to buy a house and buying a house are two very different. <laughs> like, there's a lot of space between right, those yeah. two decisions, and so actually coming down to the nitty gritty. And I recently just put a, my first offer down on a house oh, cool. and it got rejected. Oh. Um, so, but you know what? He don't want you to buy that house. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing <laughs> is that it, I can make all these decisions, and if God wants it to work out, it will. Yeah, mm-hmm. God will open yeah. the doors if He wants them to mm-hmm. be open well, to you. So much of it goes back to that whole that old adage of God answers all your prayers. Sometimes the answer is no. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, and this will get, turn a little bit darker, but I think it's worth it's worth doing. Uh, once again, every time I have any of these discussions on the show or in my personal life or, or whatever, um, I do. I, I like I was saying at the beginning of the segment, right? I, I feel like. Not hypocritical is the word, but maybe like a lack of understanding of all these horrible things that are happening. And so I do want to get into suffering a little bit because I think suffering is something that's worth talking about and digging our Mm -hmm. teeth into. And I would love to just open and it's pretty basic high school level apologetics, but with the problem of evil in general, evil exists. Children have cancer. Um, People Mm -hmm. are murdered. Uh, Horrible things happen to people all the time. There's terrible diseases. Um, We live in a broken, sinful world. Why? You guys got Big this. I'm not, even <laughs> act, I'm not even act like I can answer that. Yeah, same. Um, I don't. I don't know if this is fully answering your question, but kind of. I was actually. I'm glad you like mentioned suffering because I want to talk about like redemptive suffering because mm-hmm. that was something that was really big for me this past like year and a half. And you can I tell us all about it after you tell me why. No, no, bad no. no I know. I know. Okay. It's just because the devil exists. It's like he's gonna stuff bad stuff is gonna happen whether you like it or not it's just like you have to accept that the bad stuff is gonna happen and like know that there still is good yeah I, yeah I, yeah I, I guess i I, <laughs> I actually like that answer a lot better than like i can give you the philosophical answer right we all can of well there's free will and god allows us to choose evil and also mm-hmm. we live in this world that's bound by physical laws and this thing these things exist so bad things can happen also we're not made for this world like we can get into all that philosophically i'm sorry if i interrupted anything you were no, about to say no, but i think so much of these things that and i'm all about philosophy i was brought into the church because of incredible apologetics but so much of it really does just boil down to like it is man and we know that it's here and it's great that you want to figure out you want to get all that nitty-gritty and understand it and we're catholics and so we do have answers and you can dig and we can't it does make sense philosophically but also a lot of times it's just yeah man that's the world that we live in so Mm -hmm. let's deal with it well actually you know a lot of people sometimes you know like i'd say like a lot of people on podcasts are like you know i went through this suffering and I came out better on the other side, you know, yeah. but then like sometimes I hear people and it's like, it's real. It's like yeah. literally I went through this and it was the worst thing in my life. And I didn't, and I didn't even know. I and still I gained nothing. And, and I still have no idea why it happened. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And I was like, man, that's real. That's a real answer. Because, yeah. because like a lot of people are like, oh, I, I learned like this, you know, so many different great things from this. Mm-hmm. And like they try to take, but sometimes it's just like, yeah, that was horrible. And it was a lot of suffering and that was it. And the uncomfortable answer that doesn't work great at some mega church coming out of the mouth of Joel Olstein is <laughs> sometimes there's horrible suffering and it's okay because we're not made for this world. And it's, e- it is easy for me mm-hmm. to say that while sitting here in an air conditioned room with a mm-hmm. full stomach, knowing I'm going to go home to a wife who loves me. Right. Mm-hmm. But even if I were not in that position, it's still true. Right. Mm-hmm. We're not made for this world. Uh, get into redemptive suffering, Madeline. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Oh, right. no, no, no. That's okay. That makes sense. We, we're able able to mostly answer the question um no i just i just think for me i feel like i went through a lot of suffering and i kind of pitied myself Mm -hmm. for it for many years but then i realized that maybe there's a reason i'm going through the suffering like like there has been several times where like i have i don't know i've 
I've felt some sort of like spiritual warfare or I like gone through something. It's like, I feel like there's a reason that I'm experiencing this. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, I have been able to take, I don't know, feel this way or like go through this thing. So somebody else doesn't have to, okay. or maybe like for a while there, um, when I, I also, I, I asked God um, if I could possibly take the burden off of some people mm -hmm. that I knew were like struggling a lot. Mm -hmm. But obviously I did do this while I, was like good in my faith and while i was like i, I didn't do right. it while i was suffering myself well right. like you know as bad as like i've seen other people so um i don't know i feel like i don't know a lot on the topic but yeah. i do I, I don't know it's weird to i don't know how to like put it into words but it's just it's basically like if there's any way that i could take the burden off of somebody else and like not carry their cross for them but help them carry their cross yeah that's beautiful yeah. I, was, I was like that's pretty noble but i was like wait a minute Someone already did that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, literally, I, I was like, "Wow, that's really cool." I was like, "Someone should do that." Like, yeah. like wait a minute, for all the for, world for, 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 for like uh, for a while there for a few months there was somebody that I was like really praying for intently, and I actually asked God. I was like, "Let me be there, Simon," um, because I, mm. I, I was like, I was like, I feel like that's. <laughs> just the, yeah killer i love it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't really have much else to say on I'll that i was gonna read that up too or like if i can say something about the chosen real quick um yeah, anytime okay well for those <laughs> who haven't seen season three i'm gonna spoil something oh. a little bit but it's like that i think it's simon where who has you know he's like mm -hmm. sl slower walking and stuff like that and there's that moment where he kind of like catches jesus alone for a second he's like i have a question you've been healing all these other people um, it's one of the most beautiful scenes I know, in the I whole was, series. I was sobbing, dude. It, and he's, uh, but he's like, gets you. Yeah. He's like, why haven't you healed me? And and basically, the, the extent of it is Jesus says, like, you healing other people is like, what a sight. Like, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I think sometimes he does that with us, where he'll put us in those situations where, um, you know, it, and whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, some sort of something that we have to carry around, maybe for the rest of our lives, maybe not, but something to where we can go to other people and say. Um, you know, maybe who's someone who's struggling be like, I know you're struggling, but if you look at me, you know, I still have faith in him. Even though all this stuff is happening, you can still trust him even with all these, like you're saying, it, it's easy for me to say this, you know, right here, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, it might be, we go, you know, if you're suffering through something, it might be that we're, you went through that just to help somebody for a split second. Yeah. Of and that's course. the whole reason you went yeah. through that. Right, and that that split second that interaction you have with somebody could completely change their life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it was like that story you were telling me. I don't want to cut you off. No, you're good. It was that story you were telling me about. Um, there was like this 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 um woman. I think she's like oh, a prostitute or something. Yeah, yeah. She she was yeah. very like she lived her life very uh, like immoral. Yeah, promiscuous sure. basically. Um, and she was struck by lightning, and she basically she should have been dead, but she somehow lived through it. But she had like one of those. Oh my gosh, I forget what they're called, but basically, like, she was like face to face with God, and he was like, All right, this is like, you're going to hell or you're going to heaven, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so, but he like showed her all these bright lights, and there was one that was much brighter than the others. And he was like, These are all, these are all the prayers that have been said for you. He's like, But the only reason I'm giving you another chance is because of this one light right here. And he was just a little bit bright. It was like, like Well, not little, but it was like much brighter than all the other mm -hmm. ones. And it was because it was a homeless man who like sold everything he had to donate to her. So to help pay for like medical bills and stuff like that and like prayed for her. And um, he was like, it's only because of him that I'm giving you another chance. And so like after that, she completely changed her lifestyle. And that just goes back to like just offering up for other people or like we're like suffering through what you have like in hopes that it is for because I'm like, I'm going to experience this so. I could, like you were saying, like, there's like, it could be a minute you're going to help out somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, you don't know how much that yeah, changes your I'm life. Like, yeah. I want to yeah. get struck by lightning. Like, <laughs> real, real, real quick, 15 yeah. minutes of God. Before you start but, talking God, I got a question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just like, oh my gosh, I could actually go off like on the power of prayer and just, oh, it's, yeah. it's insane what you can do for someone else. It's like, and regardless yeah. of whether or not you feel like it's happening. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Exactly. I just want to triple down on that again. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I feel like it's also a, a very humble act as well to either um, very like uh, privately either pray for someone or offer something up for them mm -hmm. um, or suffer redemptively for them in any of those three manners because also it shows a way that you're willing to give yourself up for somebody else. Right. That's without beautiful. without nobody, like without proclaiming it. Right. Like in a very... 
What's the opposite? He, I guess humility, yeah. Yeah. In a very humble yeah, way. Because yeah. yeah. we're all called to carry just like a sliver of the cross. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and whether, whether it's some people's sliver is a little bit bigger than other people's, or sometimes it's just in a different way. It's uh, we're, we're called to share in that suffering. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. What were you going to say, Patrick? No, I just. Sorry, Kane. <laughs> yeah, like it was like halfway through. I was like, okay, we're back. We're back. Um, no, I didn't really have any anything to say about that. No, I, I was just thinking like, you know, in my life when, when I get to that moment where I'm, you know, with, I feel like I'm going to be like crying and laughing at the same time. Be like, why did you do that, man? But also like, you know, like I'm here, you know, like I, right. bringing up the I don't know. Seats. It is. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, like it's just, I've kind of accepted, you know, like there's just, like like it is in in job you know like i just don't need to know yeah well that's what I, that's exactly yeah. what i was about to yeah, say is that awesome. we have this required humbling of ourselves that i am not good at at all right mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. i understand that and i'm striving for that and it's almost like you know love is like a movement of the will and you can see somebody who's like the most despicable person in the world who's done horrible things You're like i really don't like this person i'm glad they're going to prison for whatever it is but it's like i'm going to love them because god tells me to it's that is that trust and it's that giving over of, of yourself and all of those things. There's a movement of the will. It's a decision you have to make and hopefully it will be a feeling at some point. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We're not, we're not made for feelings, right? It was in the bucket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I think like even just, you know, going back to what you're saying, like redemptive suffering and, and, and just like praying for be like, like, just like random Hail Marys for people. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you guys do that? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Just like on like, mm-hmm. I, and, and it feels good. You know, like, yeah. I know it's not why, like why you do it, but like, just literally like you just look over in the car next to you and you're like, just whatever they look at, you're not analyzing them for, for what they present themselves to be. You're just like, I'm just going to say Hail Mary. Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And like, I just don't think about it again. Yeah. You know, but like, that, I wonder how like, I, just, I don't really want to like, quantify it, but like, I wonder you know, if that does pay dividends in their lives, you never know. Yeah. But like, yeah. Okay. Actually, wait, I think I have talked about this on another podcast. Please tell me you have a good story about that. I really want to hear Well, that. no, I was going to say, have you ever felt somebody else's prayer? Like, have you ever? Ooh, um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I have like several times, like I knew Ooh. there's been several times where like I have, um, I, okay, I like to call them mental funks, but I get in like these like weird sure. mindsets yeah. and it's like, I just kind of spiral down. And there's been several times where I, I've like been in that situation and I've just, all of a sudden I felt okay. And I was like, I was like, yeah. whatever I was feeling was gone. I was like, that's some roots prayer. Or right. like something will happen. It'll like, most of the time it's like some sort of joy for me. Um, so it's like, I feel a sense of joy or somebody brings me joy, yeah. something yeah. like that. And it's like, that was somebody's prayer. I like what you were saying about how I wish that we could quantify prayer somehow, because like you have, we have no mm-hmm. idea. Prayer is such a powerful thing, mm-hmm. but it's something that, you know, we seldom, get to see like come to fruition and that also goes into trust were you gonna say something no 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 yeah uh, <laughs> well, well, well there was something about like um someone showed me this video i think it was actually my youth minister showed me this video of this guy who was like you know running around his neighborhood just like he normally was you know um and there was an ambulance at a house and and um he just said a quick hail mary like literally just a hail mary like doesn't it doesn't even need to be a whole rosary like you know, it's Wait. just crazy the power of like just one prayer. And um, he was walk- he was running around the neighborhood again the next the next week or something like that. And the person was like, "Hey, like I know you." And and they were like, "What?" He was like, "What? What do you mean?" It's like I don't know. I don't know. It was it was just weird for him. And then he um, the person said like I met God. And then like. They said that the only reason I would be able to like live again is because of like that prayer in that moment. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I'm like, this apparently to happens all the time. Honestly, everybody but honestly, me. Honestly, that's a big motivation of like why you should pray for <laughs> yeah. people on the road, you know, too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, just because like well, just and say the prayer then. Because I'm super <laughs> guilty of like, hey, will you please pray for me? I'm like, yeah, totally. Yeah, later. <laughs> and then I get caught up and we add this. This is literally part of our intentions for every prayer now because I've been so bad at this historically, mm-hmm. is we we go through all of our intentions, and then we say, and everyone who we said we'd pray for and everyone Smart. who needs our prayers. Yeah. Like, I just got to make sure that I, <laughs> yeah. I say that. Um, but yeah, it's a, normally when you say like, hey, man, we pray for me. I'm like, all right. And I have to like walk away and th- that moment be like, I'm saying this for Patrick, Hail Mary, whatever, just a real quick. Well, even something. even when someone says like, you know, the Lord's name in vain or something oh. like that, there's like, like, a, like a mental prayer for them, you know, yeah. or something like that, you know, like or, or anything, you know, like you, you just hear and like it's, you really can be like in a constant state of prayer, yeah. you know, like, right. like in, 
obviously not like just living in your head like you know zoning out all the time but you know I don't mean to bring every single one of these episodes back to the scourge that is pornography, but I knew you were going to go. There. I, t- I tend to <laughs> um, a, something that really helped me when I was getting all that out of my life was starting to pray for anybody who's involved. And, mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it really helped humanize these poor women in these terrible situations. Yeah. Right. And, and just saying, saying prayers for them. And even now if I'm driving down the road and I pass like one of those awful, you know, adult, toy stores or whatever mm-hmm. on the side of the road. Um, there's usually a picture of some girl with barely any clothes on I, I pray for because she's a girl who's hopefully alive still, but mm-hmm. is out right. there somewhere and needs right. them. Um, all right, well, we're about out of time. We have not done note cards once this, uh, this past session. few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's let's knock them out. Let's all do a note card. Oh boy. I'm not going to make these themed because I feel like it'd be weird to do like, but this one has to do with suffering. You have to make this one <laughs> suffer. Never done this before. What is you this? never done note cards? No. Did you do popsicle really? sticks? No. Oh, wait. No, I'm, okay. The last what? time he said he filmed, it was like in December. So. Uh, oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. Wow. We, we've uh, always done note cards or popsicle with sticks. Mr. Mr. First year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. absolutely. All right, cool. Uh, so the way it works is you just pick one. Pick one and answer it. There's a load okay. of questions, Junior. is oh, made for like eight-year-olds. Okay. Uh, but you can answer it however you want. Or you can modify it, but only if it's like funny or interesting. Um, you want to start, Ben? Producer Ben? Gosh, okay, yeah. Uh, you don't have to. Let's see. All right, hey, Ben. Let's, uh, whenever you're ready. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you just wait. Did you yeah. just cut over to me? <laughs> Calling Madeline a whip for asking you know, <laughs> trade out cards? That's yeah, funny. okay. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, what quality about yourself do you admit could change for the better? Trusting in God more. Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, come on. Do you want me to pick uh, another one? Uh, no, uh, it's fine. <laughs> whatever. If that's how you want to live your life. Uh, Kane. What do you always wonder about? And this ooh, is kind of like, ooh, this is this is actually a little deep, you know? It's mm, not, mm-hmm. So, you know how like, uh, well, there actually could be like a scientific reason to this. And I actually do wonder about it. So, um, you know how like when, when someone's like on the edge of, of dying, like they're like super weak and then like uh, they start to go through, what do you call it? Like when they harden up and stuff like that, when they Rigor actually mortis. die, yeah. rigor mortis, what like separates like that, like even though they're super, super weak at that point, like, it's something like happens when you die, like that you like that. Just, oh, that's that a good process. I mean, there is a medical answer for no, that. No, I know, I know, yeah. but like, why did like that's just what I want. You're wondered. saying you go from being a really frail old person to being impossible to even move your. No, no, but just like, why does it? Why does it not happen? Like while you're alive, like why is it only when you're dead? that it like starts the process. You Interesting. Know? I don't know. We're going to have Dr. Oz on the show next week, so we can ask him. <laughs> you might know that. Yeah. Uh, Bill Nye, feel free to comment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of comment, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're still there, make sure that you uh, like and subscribe. Am I allowed to do two? I remember was to do a it. a fantastic segue there. I Thanks, was ben. amazed by that. I went to Harvard, wow. but for segues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, buddy. Uh, out, but you went. I did. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you could be on the cover of any magazine, what would you choose? I would do in the movie Secret Life of Walter Mitty, the life's last like printed edition of the magazine. You were I talking be Ben's language right now. <laughs> Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's a solid movie. It was our beach retreat movie yeah. a couple years uh-huh. ago. Yeah, I yeah. would be on that last printed magazine. That'd be good. Cover. All right, what you got, Cameron? Uh, it says, where would you hate to be alone? And I, Ooh. there's a lot. I would say, okay. I'll say one thing and I'll say another thing. I would hate to be alone is Chernobyl. Um, but where I'd like to be yeah. with other people, also Chernobyl. <laughs> really? <laughs> You'd want to make other people I, exist I, I, in Chernobyl with no. you? Well, I watched, <laughs> That's terrible. There's, you can look at people on YouTube who like go there. They're called stalkers. They're not like stalkers. They're just right. like normal people. But they go there and they kind of like hide out and they normal. can live there for like a couple days and they have to do all this sorts of like prep and like purification of the water and stuff. And then they grow extra limbs. Yeah, and, well, and then yeah. they like have like bionic Hopefully. powers and stuff. <laughs> oh, so cool. All the wolves are like eight legged and they're upside down. That's me. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's pretty cool. Worth yeah. it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Isn't wait, wait, real quick before we completely go off topic? Isn't there like a master that it's like if you see it, if like in the presence of it, you, you're dead? A what? Like this? Oh, massive, the elephant's foot. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Something. Yeah. Gonna... That's the old. Yeah, some is that intro radioactive. That... Yeah, I think it is. It's actually right? in the plant at the bottom. Yeah. Is it near like the reactor? Yeah, I don't. Oh, okay. I mean, it's it's something like, that came out of the reactor. I don't like, know much like, about. Like, I wonder what the water tastes like. That. It's like basically if you see it, you're dead. One way to wonder what the water tastes like in Chernobyl. You'll find out. Find out. I guess. Yeah. Full send. 
Which going um, on? I got a, what is something you argue about? And so, um, me and my mom argue about this a lot. Shout out, shout out, Leo. Love you. Um, <laughs> but like if words are actually like words <laughs> like oh, i'm like man. like oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just be saying my mom loves to do this i mean most of the time i think I, I, i'm right sure we yeah. look at it we look it up and make sure and well, leah's you know, not here right now I don't, so I'm I don't have a, yeah i don't have a tally kept or anything but the tally in my head says i'm a little above sure you know, sometimes you know i just try to you know sound smart and i'll use a word sometimes it's like oh, that didn't make any sense. That, <laughs> it, it sounds good coming out the mouth wait are they actual words that you're using or are you most just of the time like, yeah. yes it's like okay but i can't nothing like comes to mind right now but uh it's like no the theory of steganomics yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you just combine the word stegosaurus yeah. with that ah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, okay but oh, she, yeah. she loves to like catch me she's like that's not a word or like or or just that does not mean what you think it does okay that's fair. Princess like Brett. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I got one that we tend to get a lot. Um, and it's the what's your favorite dessert question. But every oh, time I get yeah. it, I always make a modify it to what's your favorite <laughs> desert. I always remove an S. So you have to pick your, the best desert. And the desert that I pick <laughs> is the Kalahari Desert. Because wow. this time last oh. year, I was on a plane or about to be on a plane flying over to the Kalahari desert wow. uh, to do my, my big African safari. Nice. It Did was you a see lot it? of fun. The out? desert. I yeah. look, I, huh? I spent a lot of time in it. <laughs> a lot of time walking Where, on it. Where's the Gobi desert is Mongolia. Oh yeah. Not even close. Thought it was yeah. Africa. No, but, uh, but all my, uh, my animals are coming back on hmm. uh, like next week. Nice. I mean, they're dead. They've been dead for a year. But oh. They're going to come is? back so I can decorate my house. Would you say them. they're in rigor mortis? Um, no, they are <laughs> skulls and skins. <laughs> yeah, uh, a gims buck, a spring buck, a wildebeest, and a nice. and a jackal. Yeah, wow. you're fun. just keeping the lion under wraps. Um, yeah, yeah, no, we can't. A, you can't import those anymore. They change seriously. Yeah, yeah they, so it's uh, a uh, wildebeest or, or the yeah. elephant yeah. test. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that is all the time we have today, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, Madeline, Cameron, Noah, Kane. Thanks for being here, Ben. Those teeth have been kickled. <laughs> Those teas have been kickled. Teas have been kickled. <laughs> Fun has been had. Uh, and uh, as always, shit knows Benny. It has been a terrifying reflection on my mortality. Uh, <laughs> great to have you here, as always. Uh, I think that's all we got for today. Producer Ben? Yeah. You're listening to <laughs> Hello to the Quest on Lambs Catholic Radio. It's been honest to God. Got anything to say for Ben? Signing off. Over now. <laughs> <laughs>